Hello everyone, welcome to Information Jungle channel. Today we are going to learn about earthquakes. Yes, earthquakes. The natural disaster you must have heard in the news or from your close ones or relatives. Or you might have been experiencing it in your life. So, what are earthquakes? Earthquakes are enormous, sudden and violent shaking of the earth's crust. When they occur, a lot of destruction takes place, such as many buildings fall, trees fall, and sometimes even loss of life. Now, how loss of life? Well, some people stand on the trees when there is an earthquake, the trees fall and hurt them. Some people ignore earthquakes and stay inside their buildings whenever there is a big one. I'm talking especially about the big ones. And those buildings fall, people die. And uh, earthquakes trigger many other natural disasters. For example, a tsunami. Whenever a tsunami comes, the, uh, the land gets flooded, the water gets contaminated, houses are ripped apart and uh, uh, crops are destroyed. This also causes loss of life. For example, Chignik earthquake occurred off the coast of Alaska Peninsula. A tsunami warning was issued by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA, but later it was cancelled. The main shock was followed by several aftershocks. The main shock is the largest earthquake in a sequence which is sometimes preceded by one or more foreshocks and almost always followed by many aftershocks. The aftershock is a smaller earthquake following the main, the main shock of the large earthquake. So every time there is an earthquake, do remember to hold on for a few more minutes. So, first of all, which happens really rarely, there are some foreshocks. Foreshocks are uh, the shaking of the earthquakes before the main shock. They are light and then the main shock. The main shock is the largest shock, the largest shock that comes in sequence of the whole earthquake. Then it is almost always it is pre preceded by an aftershock. What causes earthquakes? The earth's crust comprising rocks and soil is the outermost solid shell of a planet. There are many reasons that can cause an earthquake. Few of them are divergent boundary. The crust is the thinnest layer of the earth and is broken into many pieces called plates. Crust, the thinnest, the outermost and the fourth layer of the earth. These plates float on the semi-liquid layer of the earth called the mantle. Semi-liquid. The mantle is the third layer of the earth. These plates are continuously moving and sometimes collide with each other causing strong vibrations or tremors. These strong vibrations shake the earth's crust causing earthquakes. So, sometimes like other people, uh, the two continental plates come walking towards each other and collide. That sends shock waves across, across that land which causes earthquakes. Geological fault. A geological fault is known as the displacement of plates of the original plane. The plate can be horizontal or vertical. These faults occur due to the impact of geological forces. The geological force mentioned here is tension force. Tension force pulls one whole crustal block in two opposite directions. Most of the pressure uh, comes uh, on the middle part of, uh, of the whole plane. And then over time, due to the tension force, the middle part becomes really weak. And once it just breaks apart, sending shock waves, creating a shock. And that causes earthquakes. Groundwater extraction. Water being drawn out from large aquifers can cause a very massive earthquake. Scientists aren't saying that removing water will cause a big one anytime soon. But they do know that groundwater depletion could be responsible for some of the changes seen in the frequency of small earthquakes in the region. Mining. Mining simply causes seismic activity which triggers earthquakes. Now, the ring of fire. The ring of fire is an area shaped like a ring that consists of numerous massive active volcanoes. We know that volcanoes can cause earthquakes. So whenever volcanic eruption takes place, earthquakes are caused. It is simple. It is also believed that if 
all of the volcanoes all big small uh, big small volcanoes of the world erupt at once there would be lots and lots of explosions and explosive volcanoes will release out lots of rocks and ash and gas winding out nearby areas they would travel thousands of kilometers and cover the earth with a thick blanket of ash so no sunlight no chances of even one ray of sunlight that's exactly what happened when that asteroid hit the earth during the dinosaur era the, the asteroid caused a thick blanket of ash to cover the cover the earth and that stopped the sunlight from coming and that's how the dinosaurs died the air would be filled with dust allowing them not to breathe and it would stop all the sunlight from coming to the earth surface all sunlight so means no photosynthesis and if no sunlight comes after all the volcanoes erupt then there would be a new ice age if all the volcanoes erupt together you wouldn't be able to escape on a plane the hot clouds of ash will melt car and plane engines so no escape all the planes would be cancelled anyway because of low visibility deep ocean volcanoes will make the water acidic it will cause a huge loss in aquatic life no sunlight means no chances of photosynthesis all the plants will die including all the crops that feed us and the animals so triggering the food chain even if the crops could somehow survive without the sun they'd be wiped out by acidic rains acid rains you must have heard of it devastating the whole food chain because of volcanic because volcanic ash is actually tiny rock particles it would be very heavy if enough ash were to fall on your roof your home would collapse so plants plants have been wiped out because of the acidic rain no sunlight and those herbivorous animals would not be able to live without eating plants so they would die then the carnivore then after all the herbivorous animals die the carnivorous animals would not be able to eat them and thus they will also die so like every single living thing in that world in that post apocalyptic world would die and with all the carbon dioxide released during the eruptions we see a tremendous greenhouse effect that would heat up this planet again so i said heat up now if you did survive the volcanic explosions and didn't die from breathing in the ash the safest place for you might be on a ship in the middle of the ocean or in an underground bunker this may sure you have enough food supplies and warm clothes to keep you alive in this post apocalyptic world that this is the ring of fire the entire red area the red highlighted area is the ring of fire and this it is one of the most earthquake prone area in the world why are earthquakes dangerous in the centuries earthquakes have been responsible for millions of deaths and an incalculable amount of damage to property depending upon the intensity earthquakes can topple buildings and bridges rupture gas pipelines and other infrastructure and trigger landslides tsunamis and volcanoes the primary is responsible for deaths and injuries very great earthquakes occur on average about once per year approximately 50000 earthquakes are large enough to be noticed without the help of any instruments like a seismograph of these about 100 are a sufficient size to produce a lot of damage if the centers are near areas of habitation very great earthquakes occur on average about once per year aftermath in earthquake an earthquake causes damage to property and life it may bring landslides fires tsunamis floods and other natural disasters they may also cause permanent changes in the courses of rivers sometimes displacements of the earth crust may also reveal hidden treasures of minerals which makes it easier to extract so earthquakes having disadvantages which we can see also has some advantages now precautions 
these precautions must be followed during an earthquake if you value your life. Run into an open area away from buildings and tall trees because they can fall and hurt you. Very important. That's why a lot of lives are lost during earthquakes. Use the staircases instead of lifts because if you use lifts, the, the cables will crack and well, the lift will fall, may fall. In case you're indoors and cannot go out, nowhere to go out, no escape. Just go under a strong cable or bed because during an earthquake high things fall and if they fall on your head then you're like gone gone due to that earthquake so you should go under strong table or bed that can then just support all that crashing weight on it these precautions must be followed really 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 important now thank you all for watching this video Please subscribe our channel, like this video and also share it. Thank you.